You think you got a good handle on what's going on in Afghanistan? <laughs> the history? Uh, what happened? What's going on right this minute? The what's happened in the last mm, you know week? There's a lot. No. It really is. And the vaccine? Uh, mask up, get the shot. Uh, th- that's Keep a, fighting with all the people in your church and your community and your school district. Things are very difficult out there right now. John Stone Street is with us. We're happy that he is. John's the president of the Colson Center for Christian Worldview, here to talk about the aforementioned subjects. Hey, John, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well. Hey, good to talk to you guys. And yeah. I'm not sure what to do with that introduction where you promised answers to all these crazy questions. No, he didn't about. promise <laughs> answers. No pressure, John. He, he was, no pressure. He was actually treating you like a therapist because he's like, oh, my gosh, somebody please come. Rescue us. And help us. From the news cycle, please. All right. So let's start um, Let's start on this side. Conditions. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there's these cultural, there are these personal morbidities, health morbidities that make COVID a more dangerous disease. And we know that's true for personal health. It's also been true for cultural health. Right. I mean, when you take something that should be as uh, blatantly uh, scientific and non-political as a physical health question, and we see that it basically further divides us along political lines, that's because of a pre-existing condition of where we already were before this other thing came and added stress. Uh, when you see, for example, the explosive, the explosion in numbers of what have been called deaths from despair, uh, suicide overdoses, you know, that sort of thing, uh, because of isolation, because of our, you know, uh, you know, even further ostracization from other people, um, then something like the pandemic and lockdowns and masks and closing down schools, all of that's going to make it worse. And then, and then you also see too the the fear that is so easy uh, to creep into all of us uh, based on physical uh, health and physical well-being. Well, that's because we live in a, a culture that is highly secularized, where we only think about this life. We don't think about the next one. Right. We only think about the physical world. We don't think about that there's more to us than just our bodies, um, that there actually is something inherently uh, good about how God created us in his image, both physical and spiritual. So that's what's making this. I want to I get underneath kind of the division and say, where is that coming from? Uh, and because we're going to read all of these things through a worldview, and we can already see indications in our culture that how we're seeing the world is too small. It's not a big enough vision of life in the world uh, that is shaped by Scripture. Right. But, John, I mean, even in the midst of uh, uh, you and I and Kath and our, our, most of our audience, as believers in Jesus Christ, you think our worldview would be a little different. But in many ways, we're leading the charge yeah. in the divis- divisiveness of where we are in the country. Yeah, we really can. And, and, of course, again, this goes back to, you know, before 2020, and that is, for many of us, the uh, our, our faith is not only personal, it's private. And what we like to say, and, and we got this directly from Chuck Colson, our founder, is that, you know, faith is personal. That's the beauty that God and Christ has made himself known to us personally. But it's not private. Christian truth is, is public truth. It is truth about the sort of world we live in, the sort of creatures we are as image bearers, the sort of future history is headed to because of the death and resurrection of Christ. And, but, but what we tend to do is, is kind of rely on our faith for either personal encouragement or private well-being without seeing the rest of the world through that lens. And so what we end up doing then is see the rest of the world through some other lens. And a lot of times that's the political lens. I I wrote about this a couple weeks ago. I said, you know, politics is important. Politics matters. Policy is significant. But politics makes a lousy worldview. Sure does. Uh, Christianity, on the other hand, makes a great worldview Mm -hmm. because it does explain the world the way it actually is. John Stone Street is with us, president of the Colson Center for Christian Worldview. And John, I got to be honest, I'm sick. I'm just sick of the divisions. I really am. And I, and at the beginning when COVID started and, you know, I, I felt like I was more patient and I wanted, you know, no one had ever been through this before. This was uncharted water for everybody. Um, it was, you know, people were, you know, slamming elected officials. And I was, you know, let's give the guy a break. Let's give the woman a break. Like they're trying to figure it out. They didn't expect to be governor during an era like, well, you know, know what all of my like fine ideals have collapsed that breaks I'm over just sick of it john <laughs> i just i wish that i wish that people were just kinder about it you know okay you, okay, you brought up chuck uh, a couple years before chuck passed away he did a series with us here on the show and he told us this about five times if you can't learn to be winsome 
and how you speak of your faith in a secular world, you are not going to have any success and you're going to be a miserable person. So if he told John and I that five times, he must have told you that, John, 5,000 times, right? <laughs> so I just well, feel, absolutely. Yeah, so I feel like we've lost that. Everybody's so mad. Yeah. Well, but there's an equal and opposite mistake, and Chuck would have said this just as many times, and that is the, is to confuse being um, non-convictional, not having strong uh, a strong uh, grounding in truth, and use that as an excuse for winsomeness. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. It's almost as if we're told that truth and love are incompatible, yeah. that you either can do one or the other. If you love, it means you don't have a strong opinion. But, you know, as we've seen, some of the issues that are creating the division in America – are significant issues. I mean, it's more than just uh, personal matters of difference. Lives are literally at stake, depending on what you think about the humanity of the unborn. Uh, emotional well-being is at stake, based on what you think about these kind of hot topic issues of sexuality and gender. And, you know, the well-being of school children, of parents, of communities when it comes to school lockdowns and what principals are trying to do in teachers. But you're, you're right. What we are forgetting is that every single person that we meet and talk with are themselves made in the image and likeness of God. And uh, we should treat them as such. And we're not even winsome. We shouldn't just be winsome because it works, because sometimes it doesn't. You could be as winsome as you want, like my friend Jack Phillips here in Denver, uh, the baker, sure. uh, who uh, stood up for his convictions and did it really well. And you still might you know, get, get, get shot between the eyes. Mm -hmm. But Christians should, should not just uh, stand up for truth and do it winsomely and lovingly because of some strategic advantage. It's because of what we actually believe. Sure, right. We believe that God loves us. We believe that any grasp of truth that we have is by God's grace. And, you know, Chuck used to say this, you never get mad at a blind man for tripping over your feet. And if people are really lost in their worldviews, then, uh, you know, as Paul told Timothy, we must persuade. We must do it, not because we're mad at the person, but because we're mad that the enemy has taken the person captive by bad ideas. From the Colson Center for Christian Worldview, we're talking with John Stone Street, who is the president of the Colson Center. So, John, um, talk to us about Afghanistan. Um, oh. it's, it's hard to be winsome uh, about yeah, that sure at all. Is. Uh, it, well, it is. I mean, and look, there's there, there's no Christian virtue for um, uh, you know to uh, downplaying how bad something is. This is one of the great failures in American military and political history when it comes to international policy. Uh, this is an abandonment um, of um, uh, that we have not seen. I, I think you know there's been many comparisons with Saigon and others. I, I think this one outranks it just because of how dramatically things are going to be different for people who, who served and walk, worked with us. Um, even if a withdrawal was the right thing to do, the way it was done was one that completely uh, broke our word uh, to so many people. I, I think I'm a dad. I have three daughters. Uh, and I think about, you know, my daughters were born a few years after 9-11, and you think about girls that same age in Afghanistan that knew a completely different Afghanistan, and now overnight are going to go back to something that their moms and their dads uh, work so hard to change. It, it's just hard to put it all into categories of belief, but, but part of it is the fact uh, of, of understanding worldview, and we wrote about this just recently on our Breakpoint Commentaries, and because to understand the worldview of the Taliban means you have to think beyond 20 years. 20 years ago, uh, when this this war really you know heated up between radical Islam, particularly the the version that you get from Al Qaeda and the Taliban, and the West, our memory went back to 9/11. Their memory went back to the fall of Spain. Now, the right. fall of Spain has to do with when Spanish territory went from being dominated by Islam to dominated by the Catholic Church. That's how far back that goes. We don't think back that far, but they have both this strong sense of history and a strong sense of the inevitability of the future. In other words, we think, oh, well, we had the Taliban, you know, 
you know, suppressed for 20 years, and you know they were run out of Afghanistan, and now they're back. It, it, it was that was just the chapter in the longer story of Islamic lands remaining under Islamic rule, and Islamic rule eventually taking over the world. You can't understand this global struggle with this form of Islam unless you understand the Islamic worldview and you understand the categories that they think with, with which goes so far back uh, beyond where so many Western Westerners think. Yeah, John, and that's that's an insightful point. And I think that we run, you know, this is just a danger. Whenever there's an issue that rises to the front of news coverage and it engenders a lot of emotion from people, we end up feeling very strongly about issues that we really don't understand. And of course, Twitter wouldn't exist if people weren't like that but uh but it is it is dangerous for us you know i have a we have a friend john and i both do who's lived on the border of pakistan and afghanistan for you know three decades and he said you know don't get caught up try not to get caught up in the in the emotion of it pray that you can be helpful pray that you can actually do something that matters and so I, i guess i'd ask you that john you know how do you how do you keep away from just going like up and down with the news cycle um with your emotional investment and actually like i don't know try to garner your capital to 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 be able to step out and care when it's really needed yeah, it's such a good question. One of the things I married well, so my wife oh, helps me helpful. do that. Good for you. And remind, yeah, but, but you know, the other thing too is I think we have to, uh, if we're going to approach this as 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 Christians, we have to then not only see the world as Christ uh, taught us, but also then engage the world as Christ taught us. We get asked so much, especially on issues like this, that seems so overwhelming and so much bigger than what any anybody else in any of us can do. You know, I, I know I should pray, but other than that, what can I do? Mm, yeah. As if praying itself isn't doing something. Uh, praying is a weapon that God has given us. Praying is a resource that God has given us uh, that both changes our mind and in some way that uh, it's hard to understand theologically changes even the the, the mind the, the heart of God at times, um, and and you know what I think we need to take that seriously at times like this, and that's a very countercultural thing to do in a secular world where we either have a technological, political, or a scientific or medical answer for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing the world as God sees it should should lead us to realize that the global struggle between good and evil uh, runs through the course of history. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, you know, talked about this, and he said, you know, if only there was this group of people that were evil and we could get rid of them and we get rid of all the people It'd be so easy, right. It would be so easy, but the line of good and evil runs right down the middle of the human heart. And that means it runs right down between nations and civilizations and everything else. And so I think this should dr- this should drive us to our knees uh, to pray, mm-hmm. particularly for this new and emerging, bold, courageous Christian church that has emerged in Afghanistan just in the last several years um, and has become public. They're, they're facing something that is unimaginable. And uh, we pray for them and we care for them. And I think we sh- certainly should call out government misbehavior like we've seen in the last uh, week and a half. Uh, and, and, and that is doing something. Good. Hey, John Stone Street is with us, president of the Colson Center for Christian Worldview. John, before you leave us, talk about the Colson Center for Christian Worldview, the work that you're doing. Of course, we hear Breakpoint every day, but it goes a lot deeper than that and the work that you do. It does. I mean, listen, our mission, as, as Chuck left us, uh, le- left it for us is to help Christians understand and engage the world as Christians. We think it's actually possible, even in this culture with so many new pressures and intense and crazy ideas, that the church can actually be the church. And that means holding together truth and love, being able to think well and being able to serve and love well. And so all of our commentaries and content does that. Breakpoint's a key example of that. We also do leadership training through a program called the Colson Fellows. We have about 750 people studying with us this year in, in 60 different cities and uh, that, that are just going deep into what it means to think from a Christian worldview, to understand the main cultural issues that are at work today, and then also to lead well in their local communities. And that's what our vision is. You can find us at breakpoint.org. Breakpoint.org is the best place to go. Very nice. John, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for being with us today.
God bless you guys. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. And you as well. Wisdom and some winsomeness. It's always from, uh, good to John combine Sloan them. Treat. It really is, yeah. Because if you have one without the other, <laughs> well, either you're dumb or you're like really dull, boring, and pedantic, right? John Stone Street. He's neither he's of those. He's none of those things. No, no, he's not.